your Sunday money. Facebook, Blue Apron, Pinterest, Lyft, Uber. Those sound familiar, right? What do they all have in common? Well, all of these companies made their stock available to investors in initial public offerings or IPOs. You may be going, well, what's an IPO? And maybe why should we invest in one? You're in luck because certified financial planner Paul Fade joins us for your Sunday money. And IPOs are what we're going to be talking about today. Let's dig a little bit more into exactly what it is. People have probably seen it or, or heard of the term before, but not quite familiar. Exactly, Leslie. Uh, initial public offering. So a company that is private typically is owned by the founder, founder and family and friends, and sometimes folks that are injecting money, capital, venture capitalists, angel investors. So this is the first sale of the stock to the public. And last year there was about 190 uh, IPOs that rolled out. And why do they end up making them, I guess, public? Right. They don't have to. Yeah, exactly. So there's usually two reasons. And think in our backyard of you know, Clayton Homes or Goodies or Regal Cinemas that had IPOs them, themselves. One reason is to uh, raise money, to raise capital, to, you know, fund growth. And we're not talking typically just millions of dollars. We're often talking billions of dollars that are established when a company is priced and, and made public. And of course, for those founding owners, those initial group of small investors, it's an opportunity for the stock to be listed on a public exchange and can then be bought and sold. So for them, it's a quote unquote liquidity event. And for someone who might be looking to invest in one of these, what would be maybe some of the benefits or why might they be a good step to take? Well, you know, I think we, we approach it with a word of caution. They're, they're usually typically early stage companies, higher risk, a lot of volatility. Um, you know, initially there's usually limited access. The, a brokerage firm's big institutional investors retirement plans, trust funds, get the first crack at these things. And always, 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 Leslie, invest in something, not because it's an IPO and it's fascinating, but because you think it's a really good company with a really good future. Or just don't pick one just because you know the name, Facebook Exa or Uber or Lyft. Precisely, <laughs> precisely. Paul, oh, thank you. Now for our fast market fact, what do you have for us today? Kind of stay on the same topic, right? Let's stay in the IPO genre. So just looking at 2019, we've seen uh, some really popular companies go public. You know, Pinterest this year mm -hmm. went public. It's out of the gate up about 44%. Want to note that it lost $60 million last year. On the other side of the fence, Lyft, however, and its, and its uh, competitor Uber, went public this year. It's down 28% since its initial public offering. It lost 900 million last year. Then Zoom, a video conferencing tool that I use it at work, it's up a whopping 120%. You will note, however, that it's a very profitable company. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes in these early stage investments, you're investing in something, it may go up, it may go down, it may be making money, it may be losing money. So really believe in the company, its products and yeah. services. Be sure before you make that big decision. Yeah. And Paul, we're still taking questions from our viewers. If anybody has any, where can they send those to you? Love to get those emails. Paul at assetplanningcorp.com and we'll definitely work them into Sunday morning.